This is section nine of the complete works of George Saville, first Marquis of Halifax. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The complete works of George Saville, first Marquis of Halifax. Advice to a daughter. Diversions. The last thing I shall recommend to you is a wise and a safe method of using diversions. To be too eager in the pursuit of pleasure whilst you are young is dangerous. To catch at it in riper years is grasping a shadow. It will not be held. Besides that by being less natural it groweth to be indecent. Diversions are the most properly applied to ease and relieve those who are oppressed by being too much employed. Those that are idle have no need of them, and yet they, above all others, give themselves up to them. To unbend our thoughts, when they are too much stretched by our cares, is not more natural than it is necessary, but to turn our whole life into a holy day is not only ridiculous, but destroyeth pleasure instead of promoting it. The mind, like the body, is tired by being always in one posture. Too serious breaketh, and too diverting looseneth it. It is variety that giveth the relish, so that diversions too frequently repeated grow first to be indifferent, and at last tedious. Whilst they are well chosen and well timed, they are never to be blamed. But when they are used to an excess, though very innocent at first, they often grow to be criminal, and never fail to be impertinent. Some ladies are bespoken for merry meetings, as Bezoth was for duels. They are engaged in a circle of idleness, where they turn round for the whole year without the interruption of a serious hour. They know all the players' names, and are intimately acquainted with all the booths in Bartholomew Fair. No soldier is more obedient to the sound of his captain's trumpet than they are to that which summoneth them to a puppet-play or a monster. The spring that bringeth out flies and fools maketh them inhabitants in Hyde Park. In the winter they are an encumbrance to the playhouse, and the ballast of the drawing-room. The streets all this while are so weary of these daily faces that men's eyes are overlaid with them. The sight is glutted with fine things, as the stomach with sweet ones. And when a fair lady will give too much of herself to the world, she groweth luscious, and oppresseth instead of pleasing. These jolly ladies do so continually seek diversion, that in a little time they grow into a jest, yet are unwilling to remember that if they were seldomer seen they would not be so often laughed at. Besides, they make themselves cheap, than which there cannot be an unkinder word bestowed upon your sex. To play sometimes, to entertain company, or to divert yourself, is not to be disallowed, but to do it so often as to be called a gamester is to be avoided, next to the things that are most criminal. It hath consequences of several kinds not to be endured. It will engage you into a habit of idleness and ill hours, draw you into ill-mixed company, make you neglect your civilities abroad, and your business at home, and impose into your acquaintance such as will do you no credit. To deep play there will be yet greater objections. It will give occasion to the world to ask spiteful questions. How you dare venture to lose, and what means you have to pay such great sums? If you pay exactly, it will be inquired from whence the money cometh. If you owe, and especially to a man, you must be so very civil to him for his forbearance, that it layeth the ground of having it farther improved, if the gentleman is so disposed. Who will be thought no unfair creditor, if were the state faileth, he seizeth upon the person. Besides, if a lady could see her own face upon an ill game at a deep stake, she would certainly forswear anything that 
could put her looks under such a disadvantage to dance sometimes will not be imputed to you as a fault but remember that the end of your learning it was that you might the better know how to move gracefully it is only an advantage so far when it goeth beyond it one may call it excelling in a mistake which is no very great commendation it is better for a woman never to dance because she hath no skill in it than to do it too often because she doth it well the easiest as well as the safest method of doing it is in private companies amongst particular friends and then carelessly like a diversion rather than with solemnity as if it was a business or had anything in it to deserve a month's preparation by serious conference with a dancing master much more might be said to all these heads and many more might be added to them but i must restrain my thoughts which are full of my dear child and would overflow into a volume which would not be fit for a new year's gift i will conclude with my warmest wishes for all that is good to you that you may live so as to be an ornament to your family and a pattern to your sex that you may be blessed with a husband that may value and with children that may inherit your virtue that you may shine in the world by a true light and silence envy by deserving to be esteemed that wit and virtue may both conspire to make you a great figure when they are separated the first is so empty and the other so faint that they scarce have right to be commended may they therefore meet and never part let them be your guardian angels and be sure never to stray out of the distance of their joint protection may you so raise your character that you may help to make the next age a better thing and leave posterity in your debt for the disadvantage it shall receive by your example let me conjure you my dearest to comply with this kind ambition of a father whose thoughts are so engaged in your behalf that he reckoneth your happiness to be the greatest part of his own end of diversions and end of advice to a daughter read by john greenman